Uh, now it's time to go to safety first with our good friend Brian Germain. Brian, how are you doing today? Hey, Dave. I'm doing great. Always great to have you on. Um, today's topic is one that we may have covered before, but it's such a good topic that even if we have, I want to do it again. Um, it's to do with spotting. Um, it's kind of a combination of spotting and exit procedures. This listener wants to know, first of all, um, who spots? Hmm. Is it the pilot? Is it the jumper? Is it the instructor? GPS? He says it seems different from DZ to DZ and, and from aircraft to aircraft. Um, also, he wants to know about exit order, which we know can be very important, and separation between groups. Yeah. So this is kind of a, a maybe a, a big topic, but a pretty important one. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't mind doing <laughs> important topics more than once. So, I mean, the first thing to say is that everybody spots. Really. I mean, if you're jumping out of an airplane, it is your responsibility to look down and verify that this is an acceptable exit point. Landing off the drop zone is not safe. So um, in the end, of course, pilot command. That, that's the, the yay or nay. Uh, end of the day is, is, is his, his responsibility. Yes, it's your ass, but it's his aircraft. Can I elaborate on that just a little bit as a, as a full-time jet pilot? It is the pilot's responsibility to give you the okay to jump. It is not his responsibility to tell you to jump. Absolutely. So oftentimes I see we have a red light and a green light, which is I think fairly common at most turbine drop yeah. zones. The red light means you can open the door and start getting ready to jump. The green light to me means you are now, I am now giving you permission to jump. I think it's, yeah. I think it's an appropriate time for you to leave you now have my blessing. I, I know of no traffic below us. I know of no problems. But it doesn't mean you have to go. However, the red light means you do not go ever. Right. And, of so, course, that is a little bit of a variable, right? Some drop zones, it's permission. Right? And I think that's the way it really should be. However, at many drop zones, that means go now. Green light is go, 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 go. And if you don't go, people are going to start screaming. And, of course, that's an interesting scenario, right? So when you look down... You know, and it's it is your ass. And you, know, you look at the ground and go, okay, I'm I'm over a cloud. I don't want to go to go through this big nasty black cloud, or clearly I can see that it's windy, and I know the situation, and we need to take the spot deeper. If the people are screaming at you, you got to think emotionally. Why are they screaming? They're scared. They're scared of landing off, right? So you you can allow peer pressure to force you out of the door when you don't feel comfortable, or you can say, well, it's your door. Feel free. You can go short if you want to. <laughs> you can go through the soup if you want to, but I, I don't want to go right now. Or you can look them in the eye and smile and say, it's okay. I can see. <laughs> you know, soothe. Give them a big hug. I love you guys. I would like to add one caveat to that as well, yeah. if you'll let me. Of course. And this is one that I see um, primarily um, from jumpers coming from smaller drop zones that maybe have not jumped in airplanes where we have a whole bunch of groups. They're used to jumping out of an airplane where one or two groups, because you're maybe a Cessna or something. I think that they look at the spot differently than we do in the turbine world. They look at the spot as that blade of grass right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's my exit point. Uh, and that works perfect when you're one group getting out and that's it. You can get that perfect spot. In the turbine world, when we've got 12 groups trying to get out on one pass, it's not a spot anymore. It's more of a jump window. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I see the people from the Cessna drop zones, I'll turn the green light on, and they'll look out, and they'll see they're not at that perfect spot yet, and, and that's the reason they're waiting. And, and I yeah. think that's what can lead to that yelling sometimes is because the other people in the airplane realize that everybody behind me is yeah. now screwed because you don't want to get out yeah. short. Yeah, so you got your perfect spot and nobody got it. Exactly. Spot. So in a in that environment, the perfect spot belongs to the group in the middle of the airplane. Exactly, yes. Everybody in the front half of the exit order is going to be a little short and everybody in the back half is going to be a little long. Bingo. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's, you have to you know, know the rules of the road, understand where you are, and at the same time have your, you know, your gut level instinct when you get to the door. If it's really, really, really wrong, 
the pilot has the capability of doing a go around if it's that bad. But you got to remember, these guys have the information, right? I mean, they've got that GPS in front of them most of the time. Uh, if it's a local jump pilot, even if they don't have a GPS, they know where they are. They can spot you through the soup and you know put you on the drop zone. So. Um, trust your pilots. I mean, obviously, it's, if it's a new guy, mm, that might be a little bit of a, a different story. But usually, these guys know what they're doing. So trust them. So, so now let's move to exit uh, order. Yes. So the, the real issue here, more than anything else, is how windy is it? And if the jump run is into the wind, which is not always the case, but if it is into the wind, the windier it is, the greater the space that we need in between the jumpers. And that's an issue of ground speed. How fast is the plane going across the earth? If it's booking, like on a no-wind day and you're in a king air, well, three seconds is a sizable amount. If you're in uh, an AN2 facing into a 40-knot headwind, 12 seconds won't be remotely close to safe. Right? So you have to consider what you're jumping out of. You also have to consider, what am I doing? Right, so if a flat flyer leaves the airplane and they hit the wind with their f- sort of flat, high angle of attack attitude, they have a lot of drag, they drift off to the tail of the airplane, and their trajectory is a fairly steep uh, arc towards the earth. You know, so they don't spend much time under the airplane. Whereas a free flyer, particularly one that goes head down or a group that goes you know, in a really clean, good exit, they're going to stay under the airplane for quite a while. And so their arc is very, very different. So if you have the free flyers go out first, you can end up with them staying under the plane and then flat groups come out after them. And guess who is right underneath, right? So you've got the free flyers directly underneath or possibly even past your first flat group. And on the whole, I notice free flyers seem to open a little bit higher than most flat flyers. They're not as grip fixated. They're more just kind of artistic. Ooh, it was pretty. Whereas right, the four-way guys are like, one more point other, I'm going to hate myself. <laughs> Right? So they got to get that, that last point, and they break off a little bit lower. So, And that's fine. As long as we understand that, we need to simply put out the, the RW people first, and then you have the, the free flyers out next. And, of course, it's polite to have the big groups go first and then smaller and smaller and smaller within those two subsets. And that's mostly just to try to put the most people on the drop zone that you can. Um, and then you have your, your students in handems after that and your crazy wingsuit flyers. And, uh, of course, trackers get a little bit more complicated. The truth of the matter is that you can have a tracking group go out first as long as they understand this is the jump run, fly away from it. You know, in theory, you can have uh, two different tracking groups or even two different wingsuit groups as long as they talk about it and they think about, okay, you've got this side of the jump run, we have this side, please don't cross over. That's one that varies a lot from drop zone to drop zone, too. Here, here at Skydive Chicago, the trackers tend to go last, go up the line of flight, then do like a 90-degree offset and then come back down. When we're in Sebastian, they do it the other way. They go first. They go 45 degrees off the line of flight and just keep on going. Yeah, yeah. Both can be done as long as you think about it and talk about it. And, you know, that's a, when people show up at the airplane at a two-minute call, you know, and they're, they're running back for their goggles because they forgot that and they're tightening their leg straps as they climb on the steps to the otter, you're not able to talk this stuff out and that's where you get the problems just so show up early keep your heart rate down talk it out make sure that everybody's there and find out what that you know one shifty eyed guy's going to do that you know oh I'm working on my free flying and I'm going to zing up the jump run right you have to really get that that one uh, that one person that's going to get you that that's the one you have to talk to more than anything else well, all right Brian thanks very much and uh let's see uh what website do you want to plug today? You got so many of them. I can't ever keep them. I anymore. only have two websites. So <laughs> <laughs> I just have the, the fear one and the parachute rent. So transcendingfear.com and also bigairsports.com. Sports with a Z. Thanks, Brian. We'll talk to you next time. All right. See ya.
about your dreams like a kite without a string get blown away on the modules. And don't let go of the main sheet, though you think you're both, you feel much too far. And those teeth were done again. 